Hello, hello everyone. Welcome back to the channel. Today's episode is the EFB shootout. Ladies and gentlemen, from Mandalay Bay, Las Vegas, uh, let's get ready to run. In the left corner, we have Sky for Sim. In the right corner, we have Sim EFB. Which one should you choose? Coming up next on today's episode of 2020 Flight Simmers. Welcome back, everyone. So before we get started, I thought we would go over today's agenda, just so you know what to expect. First, we're going to go over each EFB individually, talk about some of the pros and cons, and then we're going to go over how to use the EFBs. Once we're finished with that, we will then go into how to input all the information into each of these EFBs before you load into Microsoft Flight Simulator. Then we're going to go into the cost for each of the EFB products, as well as how to download and install each of them. Links for both of the add-ons will be down in the description, so be sure to go down there and check those out. While we're going along today, if you have any comments or questions, please post those down below in the comments section, and be sure to hit that subscribe, take that little bell, and smash on that thumbs up button. All right, let's get started. So the first one we're gonna talk about today is Sky for Sim, and if you go up to your toolbar, you'll have a Sky for Sim tab right there you can click on. When we open up the tablet, it's going to look pretty much like a tablet. We're just going to click on the continue at the bottom. And the first thing that's going to show up here is the world map. Now you can always get back to the world map if you'd like by clicking on the center world map button at the bottom. Along with the world map, we have a couple different icons over here on the right. We can increase zoom, decrease zoom, as well as we can change between the maps that we can display. Below that, we can click on this little button and that is going to automatically follow our plane on the map. Down below that, we can click on this and this is the filter menu. So we can choose what we would like to see on the map at any given time. If we zoom in here, there's a couple other things that you'll notice. We can also display some popular landmarks as well and you will have a written annotation as to what it is. On the map, if we highlight over any of these VORs, it'll give us the frequency and the range from our location. As well at the top here, it'll give us the waypoint identifier. And in this instance, it would be Oscar Tango Tango. The other neat thing is that if you highlight any of the airports, it will give us the tower information or the tower frequency, ATIS, altitude, and the runways as well as the waypoint identifier at the top. There's also a moving map, so it will have our flight plan displayed here as well. Now, when you first click on this, the flight plan will not be here. We have to get that to populate on the screen. So to do that, what we need to do is to come down here and click on these three little bars over here on the bottom. That'll bring us up to the main screen of the sky for sim application. We'll go through each of these individually, so you're going to understand how each of these will function and interact with each other. The map, of course, was the map that we were just on. To the right of that, we have an airport tab. You can punch in any ICAO for any airport, and it will give us the live weather, general information, runways, comms, and ILS. To get back to the main menu, we can do one of two things. We can either hit the back button at the bottom or the three little bars here over on the right. We'll choose the back button, and the next option we have here is the weather. We click on the weather icon, this will give us the local weather for where we are in the sim at that exact moment. It takes a couple seconds for things to populate in here. The METAR information will be down here at the bottom, and to the right of that we have the flight plan. Now this is the menu that we need to get to so that we can have our flight plan populate on the main map screen. So we just need to go over here to open, click on the flight plan we want to display, and then hit the little magnifying glass. The flight plan will then populate down here below, and at the top here, we have some heading information, distance, duration, and the duration will change based upon your target speed that you enter here above. Once you complete a certain leg of the flight, you can then tick off that leg so that uh, you don't have to worry about it from there on out. Next, the other thing that we can do from this page is we can either click on the departure or the destination airport. And when we do that, it'll bring us to the airport page of the tablet and it will bring us up all the current weather, general information, runways, comms, and ILS. Next down on the second row, we have the documents tab, and this is where we're gonna be storing all of our airport diagrams, stars, SIDS, 
or any other information that we want to put in here as a PDF form. That's really important that it has to be a PDF document. To open any of the documents, all we need to do is either double click or highlight and hit the magnifying glass at the top and it will open up the PDF viewer so that we can view that document. At the bottom, it will have all the different options for manipulating the document, like zooming in. We can also use our mouse to drag and drop the document around on the screen, as well as a scroll wheel to scroll in and out. One of the things that I did wanna brush over here with the PDF viewer is the resolution quality that this has. You are able to adjust some of these in the settings. We'll go over that in just a little bit, but I just wanted people to notice the quality of the resolution. I will tell you that in VR, the resolution quality of this is not very good at all. So if you are a VR user, I would highly not recommend getting the Sky for Sim because you're gonna have a tough time trying to read this in VR unless you zoom way in. In any case, I just wanted to throw that out there. So if you are a VR user, you know what you could possibly expect here. If we go back to the main menu, the next option here is the viewer tab. So some people may get confused that if they click on the viewer tab that they'll be able to view all of the documents in your documents folder. And you can only view the document that you had clicked on previously and that is it. So if you want to view any of the other documents, you need to go back to the document folder highlight the document you want, double click or click the magnifying glass, and you can now view that document in the PDF viewer. Back on the main menu, the next option we have here is the pilot book. And in this menu, I believe this is gonna keep track of all your different flights that you do. I've never used this feature, but I'm sure it is helpful because sometimes the in-sim hour counter sometimes likes to reset itself. Let me know if that's happened to you in the past. Back on the option screen, we also have a notepad. And if we click on that, it will bring up an area where we can jot any different notes that we would like to put down here. Here's the problem with that. When you click on the pad to jot down a note, it's gonna open up this virtual keyboard at the bottom. Okay, well that's great, but it takes a long time. If I could use the keyboard to actually type in here, it would be fantastic. Problem is you can use the keyboard, but look at that. It's gonna change your views or whatever that key is bound to in the SIM. So you really can't use the keyboard if you're gonna be using this feature. So I think that kind of uh, eliminates the use of this then if we can't use our keyboard, right? Let me know what you guys think down below in the comments here. All right, so let's head down here to the bottom. Uh, the first tab we have here is the bush trips. Now this is really cool. This is a new feature here. And if you're unsure of where you may want to fly next, or if you just want to discover other parts of the world, if you just don't know where to go, this is an amazing add-on because it will give us the routes that we can take for that trip. All right, next to that, we have the settings tab, and here's where we're gonna be able to set all the different menus here. So the first menu that we have here is the shortcut, and this is where we're going to be able to adjust some of the shortcuts within the tablet. Once you change any of these, if you do, make sure you hit the apply down at the bottom. Next tab over is visuals. Here's where we can choose if we would like to use the high contrast buttons on the map, yes or no. Under the maps tab, here's where we can choose all the different maps that can be displayed on our world map page. So if there are some here that we're not ever gonna use, we can just untick those. And then when you scroll through the different map options, it's only gonna display the ones that we have checked here. Over in the nav data section, this is gonna be really important if you are a frequent downloader of aftermarket scenery. Once you download that scenery and put it in the community folder, it's gonna be very important that you update the nav data. Next over, we have the PDF tab, and here's where we can adjust the quality of the images for our PDF documents. I have this already set up to 300, and it can't get any higher quality than that. So if you're a monitor user, I don't think you're gonna have much trouble with it. I think it's gonna be just fine. But if you are VR, I highly recommend to probably not get it. Over here in the API tab, there's some API keys that you're gonna to need to input in here. These are free to get, one is Bing. All this information is gonna be listed on the sky for sim website. Again, I'll post links down below on how to do that as well. The last tab that we have over here is the reset and that will reset everything that we have here back to normal or back to stock. 
And that, ladies and gentlemen, pretty much takes us through all the different features and options for the Sky for Sim tablet. If you have any questions about this one, post those down below in the comments section and let me know your thoughts on the Sky for Sim tablet. So now that we've gone through that, let's get rid of that. And now let's talk about the Sim EFB tablets. So Sim EFB is going about this a little bit different way of creating a tablet. One thing you're going to notice with Sim EFB is that you are not getting that pretty tablet form that you do with Sky for Sim. So these tablets are broken down into two different styles. Sim EFB 2 and Sim EFB 3 are the exact same. So you can have different maps or charts on your screen at the same time. Sim EFB 1 is more of a written tablet. So everything that you're going to be viewing on the first tablet is all going to be more or less documentation and writing, not necessarily charts or things like that. So if we take a look at tablet one over here on the left, this is going to give all the information from our departing airport. Now, if we tick on any one of these drop boxes here, it will give us the information corresponding for runway 10 slash 28. Same goes with if we come down to the comms, tick on the drop down, it will give all the different comms for that airport as well. Below that we have our arrival airport and in between here we have any flight plan information that we may have manually entered in before we started our flight. We'll go over how to do all of this after we get through going through each of the EFBs. So this is going to work exactly the same. If we hit the drop down, it'll bring up the information for the arrival airport as well as comms. But as you can see here, it kind of really puts a lot of the major information that we're going to need about either of our arrival or departing airport right at our fingertips here. And we can keep it on the screen so we don't have to leave that information. Let's move over to our EFB2 tablet. Now the first thing that you're going to notice here is that we have moving maps right at the very top. So the world moving map here is going to be similar to the moving map on the Sky for Sim EFB tab. One of the cool things about this map though, if we zoom in, we can actually see all the taxiways and runway information right on the moving map. And as well as our little plane right there on the map. Zooming out on the moving map a little bit, at the top here, we have several different options that we can change on the moving map. The first one that we have here is an A, and that is going to overlay the aeronautical charts on our moving map for us. Now, there are some pros to this, and the first one you'll notice is we have all the frequencies displayed right on our moving map itself. So no longer do we have to hover over something to get information for it. It's just going to give us the frequency of that VOR or airport. The thing that it will not do is it will not display any information if you do try to hover over anything. So if you have an airport like this one right here, well, it doesn't really give us any information about that airport. So I think that may just be one little con that we have about the moving map here. But that's okay, let's move on from here. Next, at the very top here, we have an airplane icon here. And this is so that we can allow the moving map to follow us or to follow our plane around. Just turned off the aeronautical information just to make it a little bit easier to see these icons here at the top. So the M icon over here is going to allow the Sim EFB to automatically select the best map or chart that it feels you should be looking at at the time. To the right of that, we have a, another icon, and this looks like two pieces of paper. If we click on that, it's going to open up all the different charts and documents here that we can open up right here on the screen. Now, the only other way that you can open up any of these documents is to go back to the home screen. And if we click on the little home button over here on the very right, that'll bring us back to the main menu here. Under the maps and charts for the departure, I have set in here a moving map for our airport. If we click on that, and the first thing that you're going to say is, wow, that's an actual airport chart. Yes, you can make any chart, SID, star, any of that, you can make those moving maps, which is very, very helpful. So the second one that we have in here is the departure, the SWAN 3 departure. And if we click on that, it will bring up that departure for us. 
Again, we can use our mouse to drag and drop that. And one of the things that you're gonna notice here is that the image quality is not overly sharpened and it really makes it a lot easier to read in VR. I will say if you're looking at this in VR compared to the Sky for Sim in VR, this is much, much clearer to read and you don't have to zoom way in on these charts. It may be hard to tell the difference on monitor, but again, if you're using VR, this is the one I would suggest to go with. And also remember, we can use this chart and make a moving map out of it so we can literally see our plane flying from one of these VORs down to and across these waypoints all the way into the airport. That is so, so cool. All right, so let's go back up to the top and I just wanna show you another one that I've created. If you're a little nav map user, then you'll be very familiar with this map. Yes, you can even take your little nav map and make that a moving map for you as well. This particular one's not a moving map, but uh, you can make this a moving map and while you're flying along here, you can see your plane flying right along your course. If you're a Sky Vector user, you can do the exact same thing with your Sky Vector plan. So Sky Vector is gonna be very useful if you're doing a VFR flight because it's got all the different VFR icons on the map. And if we zoom in, you can see the plane right here at BWI. And that map will move with us as we go along with the flight. I just think Sim EFB is so much more diverse than Sky for Sim, and it really allows you to cater this to exactly what you want it to do. You can also pull up the written flight plan from Sky Vector and input that here as well. So now let's talk about some of the cons that you may run into with Sim EFB. I think one of the major cons is that it does not give us live MEDAR data. So if you're a person that really needs the live data, this is not gonna give you live and up-to-date data. There is a way that you can display MEDAR data here in your charts, but it's only gonna be relevant from the time that you put it in there. It's not gonna continually update. So I think that's one of the only downfalls that Sim EFB has within the software is that we just don't have the live MEDAR data. But for all the other positives that this software has to offer, I think that I can look past that MEDAR data and uh, in any case, let me know what everybody thinks down below in the comments uh, of the comparison between the two and which one do you think you would wanna go with. Okay, so now that we have gone through both of the EFB tablets and all of the functions and features of them, now we're gonna get into how to input all of this data that you're seeing here on the tablets inside of the tablets before we actually spawn into our airport. All right, so let's take a look at the Sky for Sim first, and then we'll move on to the Sim EFB next. The first thing that we need to do before we do anything is to create a folder that we can use to store documents in for the Sky for Sim tablet. So all you need to do is to right click on your desktop, go down to new, create a folder, and you can name it just about anything you want. I name mine Sky for Sim. And once we got that done, we can move on to the next step. So on the general tab here is where we can either start or stop the server. We can also open the little Sky for Sim EFB in a web browser if we click on the link right here. At the top, we have the documents tab, and this is where we're gonna be storing all the documents for the Sky for Sim tablet. The first one we need to set up is the MSFS flight plan files folder. To do that, we just need to hit the browse button and then find the folder we had just created double click, select folder, and we have now set up the folder for the flight plans. Now that we've got that set up, now we can download all the charts we're gonna use for our flight for today. Now keep in mind that we are only able to download PDF documents. If it's not a PDF document, we can not store that information in the Sky for Sim tablet. So if you're a person that loves using little nav maps, well, get that out of your head because you cannot bring any of those maps into the Sky for Sim tablet. So the first thing we wanna do is to open up Sky Vector or any other map software that you're gonna use and we can create our flight plan here. Once we create the flight plan, then we can start to download all the documents that we're gonna be using for the flight plan. To get those documents, all you need to do is to highlight over the airport, right click, 
and it will bring up another menu for us. All you need to do is highlight over the airport and it will bring up all the different charts for the airport like ILS approach plates, departures, and arrivals. Next, all we want to do is to just click over here on the PDF document that you would want to download and it will open up a new tab at the top in your web browser. Once that is done, all we would need to do from this point is to click on the download button. Next, we just want to make sure that we have the correct folder selected. And then we can hit the save button to download and save it to our folder that we had just put on the desktop. We're again going to go through and do that for all the different charts for today's flight. Once we have that done and all of those documents are downloaded, we can check and just verify by double clicking on that folder and we can see all of those have been downloaded. Now we need to download the flight plan for today. To do that, just come over to the flight plan menu box, click on the export button at the top, and then we can click on FPL and download the Garmin FPL file. When we do, that download will populate in the lower left hand corner of the web browser. Once that is finished downloading, we need to open the location of the download. So we're just going to click on the little drop down, click show in folder, and it'll show us the download location for the flight plan. Now what we need to do is to take this flight plan and input it into that folder that we had just created on the desktop. So we're gonna drag and drop that flight plan and right inside the sky for sim shortcut and again if we double click on that we can see we have that flight plan here added so that's how you add the flight plan into your sky for sim tablet now once you have all that done you are pretty much good to go you just need to make sure on the general tab that you start your server and now you can start the sim and you are all set and ready to go all right, next we're gonna get into the SIM EFB and how to input all the information into the SIM EFB. And if anybody has any questions along the way, please post those down below in the comments section and I'll get right back to you. While you're down there, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. It is greatly appreciated. So the first thing you're gonna notice here is that we have a bunch of other options here than we did with the Sky for SIM. So we're gonna go over these from left to right and starting with the flight bag menus here at the top. So under the categories, we can separate our flight plans in different categories. So if we wanna do VFR flights, IFR flights, mountain flights, bush flights, we can name it pretty much whatever you wanna name it. And this way it will store those flight plans until you delete them. Once you select all of your categories, next you want to come down to the flight plans menu and here's where we can enter our flight plan for today. To do that, we just want to come over and hit the add button. From this menu, we can enter a departure, a destination, and then we can hit the OK button. If you have downloaded your flight plan from Skyvector or Little Nav Maps, we can click on the tab at the top here to import the route from another program and we can import that flight plan a couple different ways either an FLT, a PLN, or an FPL file. If you're downloading from Skyvector we're going to be using a FPL file so we can just hit import FPL, hit yes, and then we can select that file that we had just downloaded, hit open, so underneath of that, you're gonna notice that we have three other tabs, well, actually four tabs. We have the departure, a flight plan, an arrival tab, and a secondary tab. Under the departure tab, we have all the information that we are going to need for BWI Airport. All of this information is gonna be on the EFB1 tablet when we first looked at that in the sim. So this is where all of that information is gonna be stored. And this is automatically put in here with the SIM EFB software. I didn't have to enter any of this information. Next, we have the flight plan menu, and this is where the written portion of our flight plan will be located. So the written form of the flight plan we downloaded from Skyvector is gonna be right here. Under the arrival tab, this is gonna give us all the information for our arrival airport, just as it did for the departure. Again, we don't have to enter any of this information. It is automatically input. The secondary tab, this is where we can enter other charts and information for different types of planes. 
I very rarely ever use that tab, but it is there if you would like to. Over here on the right hand side, here's where we can import a flight plan from Microsoft Flight Sim. We can also publish all of our charts to the Sim EFB tablets in Microsoft Flight Simulator. So what I mean by that is once you set up all of your charts and everything inside of this Sim EFB program, you need to push all that information to the Flight Simulator EFB tablet. And that's where you're gonna do that by just hitting the publish to FS 2020. You're either gonna publish as normal or for VR and it will push all that information. Underneath of that, this is where we're gonna have all of our chart and map information. So now that we're down here at the maps and charts, let's show you how to input that information here inside of the Sim EFB. So we have a couple different ways of doing this. And say I wanted to input this image right here into our Sim EFB. To do that, I would click on one of these that is not used up. So I see I've used these up already. If you want to click one that you're not using, and then you're going to hit the grab button. When you hit that grab button, it's going to allow you to put this little green screen over top of whatever you want to say, grab off the screen. You would highlight it, hit enter, and now you can choose what you would like to call it. We're going to call it test, hit okay. And now, we can see that over here, if we hit the test, that's gonna be one of the images in those EFB tablets. So that's how you put the images into the EFB. So let's take a look and see what you would do with a PDF document. Now we're not gonna do the same thing here and hit the download button. This is a little bit easier. Again, you would wanna highlight one of these that you're not using, hit the grab button, and it will bring up that green screen for you all you got to do is highlight that document, hit enter, and then give it a name. And now you can see that chart is put right here for us. It is pretty much that easy to get that document here. But let's show you how to do that one more time with say little nav maps. Again, we're going to highlight D06 when we're not using hit grab. And now I can take that green screen and go right over my little nav map, hit enter, call it whatever you want, and now it put that image into my EFB tablet. I think that is so, so cool, and it makes it so handy here. All right, so now that you've got these in your tablet, now what do you do? How do you make them a moving map? I wanna see my plane moving on that map. So here's what we would do. Let's go over to the airport map right here. I'm gonna hit grab, and I'm gonna grab this airport map, hit enter. We're gonna call it KBWI, hit okay. And here we go. So now we have that chart put right down here at the bottom. To turn this into a moving map so we can actually see our plane moving on this, all we have to do is click up here to define this as a moving map, and then it will bring up this menu. So on this menu, this is where we're going to set up some known locations so that it can pretty much figure out the scale of this map. So to do that, we're gonna come right over here to set. You're gonna click that once and you can zoom in and out on this map here. We're gonna come over here and tell the software where the beginning of runway number 10 is. So we're gonna click on 10 and then we're gonna come down here to number 10 on the map and click right there and tell the software that's the beginning of runway 10. Now I'm gonna do the same thing for another runway and I'm gonna pick 15 left. Again, I'll pick 15 left. I'll come right over here and click at the beginning of 15 left and you will now see that the software automatically put all the other waypoints in for this particular moving map. Once you've got that done, all you need to do is hit finished and you are good to go. So now let's show you how to create a moving map from the departure chart here. So it's gonna be the same thing. We're gonna come over here. We're gonna select the departure. We're gonna hit define as moving map. So the first thing that we need to do is we're going to pick two different locations that are set locations on this chart so that it can again figure out the scale for us. 
So what I'm going to use is the Smyrna VOR and the DuPont VOR as my two waypoints to identify for scale. Next, we're going to come over here and just left click on the set. Now we have a lot of different things up here that you can try to find, but I find that this is a little bit annoying sometimes because you're trying to look for something that you just can't find on the map. So all you need to do is to come down to other nav aid or other airport or whatever you're trying to input. We're going to be using nav aid. So we're going to click other nav aid and then we're just going to click on the nav aid on the chart. So I clicked on that. And now we're just going to tell the software what that nav aid is. So we can type in the three digits ENO for the Smyrna VOR. And there you go. You can see the Smyrna VOR is right there. We can click on it, hit OK, and it is now located that VOR. We're going to do that one more time. So we're going to go to the next set. We're going to pick on other nav aid and now we're going to come up to the DuPont VOR and left click there. Again we're going to enter the waypoint code so it's DQO. Click on the DuPont Vortac and click OK and now as you can see it just input all of these other little waypoints on this map. Now, these waypoints really aren't going to matter anything to you. You're not going to see these once you open this chart up in the Sim EFB inside the simulator. So once you finish that, you just hit the finish button at the bottom and you have now created a moving map for the arrival. Now, while you're flying in on this arrival, you'll actually see your plane flying along here on the arrival chart. That is so neat. I think that is like awesome <laughs> let me know what you think down below in the comments all right so that's pretty much how to input all of your information and charts into the sim efb so you'll just do that for anything that you want to be a moving map you'll do the same thing let's show you how we're going to do this with little nav maps it's pretty much the same thing i'm going to highlight that little nav map map that we had just downloaded down here we're going to click on the define as moving map. We're just going to set some known points here. So we're going to hit the set. I'm going to choose BWI as the first choice. So I'm going to hit other airport here and I'm just going to click on BWI and I'm going to type in KBWI here. Click on and hit OK. The next set point I'm going to use is the EMI Vortac. So we're going to click on other nav aid, click on the Vortac, type EMI, highlight and click on EMI, hit OK, and there you go. It's now populated all the different waypoints on this map. Once we're finished, we can hit finished and we are done. It's that easy to create a moving map on Sim EFB. Once you finish downloading and creating all of your moving maps, don't forget to go up here to publish to FS 2020 and then you can either publish it if you're using regular monitor or if you're using this for VR. There are a couple other options in here that you can check these as well as some other publish settings. Under the publish settings, you will notice that you have an option here for the map and chart FPS. If you are noticing that maybe your moving map or something is creating an FPS issue, you can use these sliders here to give you either better FPS or better picture quality on the chart that you're looking at. According to this, these can be adjusted during the game to test and you do not need to republish all of the charts here. Over here to the left, we have iPad or Android tablet. You can also push any of these to an iPad or an Android tablet and use that as your EFB tablet as well. Now, I don't use that. I mainly use this for VR or just on my monitor and it works perfectly. Once you click the 2FS2024 VR or monitor, then all you need to do is just minimize this on our screen. You do not want to exit out of this program. Same goes for the Sky for Sim software. You do not want to close out of this application or else it will not work inside of the Sim. Now we're going to talk about 
where to download and how to install the software on our PC. All right, so keeping with the theme here, we're gonna start with the Sky for Sim software. Links for the download will be in the description, so be sure to check that out. Once you click on the link, it'll bring you up on this page for the Sky for Sim. All you need to do is come down here and hit the Buy Now button, and it will download the installer into your PC. I believe at that point, all you need to do is just open the installer and run it, and it will install the software right on your desktop. Mind you, the cost for this product is $16.90 or $14.98. I think that's euros. Correct me down in the comments, but I think that's euros. Anyway, so let's hop over to the Sim EFB and take a look at that software. Links for this will also be down in the description, so be sure to check those out. When you click on the link, it'll bring you up to this main page and you can scroll down. It's got a lot of great documentation, tutorials, just a ton of information here. They've got instructions on installing the software, adding maps and charts, so if you're confused on anything, they've got everything very highly detailed and documented right here. If you have a problem with something, you can check out the FAQ page, and then to the right of that, you can hit the purchase button to download. Next, you can choose where you would like to download this from, either Aerosoft, Just Flight, or the Sim Market. So we'll pick the Sim Market right now, left click on that, and it should open up that tab for you. As you can see, the cost for the SIM EFB is $24.95. I know that's euros. Um, so it is a significant amount more, you know, it's 10 more euros. But I think for the flexibility of the SIM EFB software, it is well, well worth it. Again, all you need to do is hit the add to cart, download it, and it is a very simple installer. It will automatically put it right on your desktop for you and you are good to go. All right, I think that's just gonna about wrap us up for today. If anybody has any questions, please post those down below in the comments section and I will get right back to you. Thanks everybody for joining us here on the channel today. If you haven't done so, make sure to go down there and hit that subscribe, tick that little bell and smash on that thumbs up button. To all of my flight simmer friends around the world, keep the blue side up. We will see you all in the next one. Thanks for watching everybody.